and hello, everyone. My name is Jonathan Dornbush, and this is Podcast Beyond, episode 637 of IGN's weekly PlayStation show, where we have so much breaking PlayStation 5 news to discuss, probably in shows to come. We don't really have it <laughs> this week, unfortunately. Um, Sony, like the PlayStation website, has barely updated us, so won't be hearing too much about the ps5 this week but luckily there are a lot of games either out right now or coming out or that had trials that we've played uh so we have a lot of games to actually discuss which is fun and wild so we're going to do that uh of course i'm joined this week by brian altano hey you you uh you had me fooled for a second there i thought you were holding back a bunch of secret info on us that we didn't know about uh, I'll tell you about Spider-Man 3 later. And we're also joined this week by Max Scoville. I think it's wild they're just skipping Spider-Man 2 entirely and just going straight to Spider-Man 3. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> they saw how much people hated the Spider-Man 3 film and were like, what if we could do better? And that's what they're trying to do. It's going to be great. I would play uh, that game. Um, it's I, a low bar. Uh, no, this week, of course, though, we are going to talk about uh, Resident Evil 3, which Lucy on the show reviewed. Uh, she reviewed the single player campaign and is working on the multiplayer portion of the review, the Project Resistance that was revealed as the multiplayer portion. So she can't be on the show right now, but we're hoping to do a follow up Resident Evil talk after the game is out. We're going to keep it spoiler th free. Of course, the game isn't out until April 3rd and we're recording March 31st. So we'll keep it spoiler free. I've never played the original, so I don't know what is and isn't different, but um, we'll talk about the game. We've all been playing it. I think we all have been enjoying it so far, so we'll have a lot to discuss there. We'll be talking about Persona 5 Royal a little bit, which I think I can say what we're giving it review-wise, um, which will make Andrew Goldfarb very happy. And uh, the Predator Hunting Grounds demo was this past week, so we can cover all that stuff. But let's start with Resident Evil 3. Finally, the you know follow-up to Resident Evil 2 remake last year, uh, obviously in the same... Uh, re engine that they've been using i am i i roughly say i'm like four hours into it or so um i'm loving it but max and brian i want to hear from you guys um max let's start with you because you've beaten it right yeah so um yeah i really i really loved re2 um sort of my first go through and then i kind of hit i think a lot of people hit this where you get you, you basically you get that kind of deja vu where you're in the same you know same police station area and it's sort of like some of the puzzles are new, but it's sort of just it feels more kind of shuffly remixy type thing. Um, you mean like I on had, the second on the second playthrough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sort yeah, of second yeah, yeah. Play around, which is like I mean, it's it's still great. It's a great game, um, but it is sort of that like it's a little bit less exciting the second time around. Uh, and so I was excited about RE3 because I had like I I never touched the original. I had no kind of frame of reference for that, uh, and I had a really good time with it. Um, it's uh, it's it doesn't do the sort of split campaign thing, which I think kind of makes a more cohesive like single playthrough. Um, it definitely is like it's definitely like iterative, you know, like it doesn't it doesn't come completely reinvent the wheel. And it's kind of cool because you can sort of see the the kind of I, again, I, I never played the original, so I don't know how much is sort of carried over, but how much it sort of pivots from being a strictly like claustrophobic survival horror game into being a little bit more like, you know, guns blazing action movie type of scenario um nemesis is utterly badass i like love i love that design i love that presentation uh just a i don't know i just i i kind of it's also like it's a really weird game to play right now because it is about a viral epidemic outbreak in a major city and then i like i think one of the opening lines is like we've never seen a viral pandemic spreading this fast or something and i'm like well that looks like the actual news right <laughs> Um, yeah, the the game does start with uh, live action footage, which I I was like pretty thrown off by. Me too. Um, and I'm I'm very capable of you know separating uh, art and and the life that it imitates and vice versa. But that that was definitely like, oh yeah, wow, this is like, and you know, no one could have planned for this, obviously. But it's just it is like it, 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 that'll be a very interesting footnote in the sort of video game history mm -hmm. that this game launched alongside something that is obviously uh a lot more serious and doesn't you know i don't i don't know anyone named martin sandwich in real life yeah. i wish i did <laughs> yeah i definitely um, I, I did i did like it when it started kind of going off the rails and getting a little bit more like you know high octane silliness like the kind of over the top resident evil stuff and that kind of helped me like i don't know that actually that was sort of cathartic it right now because right now we're all sort of stuck indoors in this you know like literal claustrophobic horror scenario and then to have it sort of be like, okay, well, like, let's maybe we maybe there should be a grenade launcher. Like, maybe we should shoot some stuff in the face because that'll. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Someone who's only had sort of a uh, much less experience with this franchise than I think either of you have had. I did like that balance. I think Max, you've sort of been comparing it to like the aliens franchise where like it does manage to get some of the spookiness in there, especially in the beginning with like resource scarcity and things like that. But then there are nemesis battles or other scenarios where it's like, no, we're just going to go all out and you're going to like wreck shop in a certain location. You get to kind of have that nice balance of the two. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm um, Ryan, how have you? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm not a hundred percent in love with this game. And that's coming Mm -hmm. from like a huge hardcore long time Resident Evil fan who's played and beaten every single one Uh, from, I think from the jump um, Resident Evil three to me was always, um, which is a weird thing to do because it's like, there's then four, but then there's code Veronica in between three and four. So that's sort of like a, what is that? Like a quintology, you know, whatever it is (laughs) either way. um, Yeah. And so four was the turning point where it split the franchise in half. I think uh, code Veronica did a little bit of that where it's sort of just like, it's a little bit action. It's a little bit um, survival horror. And I think that divide got much more lengthened than four and three was always sort of like, it was to me it was always kind of a step down from two um and i think that still rings true i think the game the the remake is gorgeous and i think it's like i'm glad it exists i'm glad it's here i wish they had taken like a little bit more sort of like maybe even final fantasy style creative liberties with it and gone a little bit more broad what's interesting about this game is that resident evil one takes place in a self-contained environment it's this giant puzzle mansion with this huge sprawling you know sort of acres of like horrible stuff going on in the backyard and all over the place but you're mostly like you're not allowed to go outside and resident evil 2 mostly takes place in a few kind of constrained environments that are both very well designed the police station i think is like one of my favorite environments that they've ever done in a resident evil game even though it's totally ridiculous uh whereas most of three or a lot of three takes place in what should feel like a sprawling city but instead feels incredibly constrained because there are very like 90s video game dynamics at play constantly telling you that you can't go here and you can't go there. And so as a modern video game that looks and feels like not something necessarily open world, but feels like explorable enough to feel like a modern AAA video game, it's a little weird to play this game that looks as good as it does and then walk eight feet and realize you can't actually really go anywhere. Um, and so that's kind of a little, you know, that's, that's kind of interesting because your brain is like, I'm in a city, I should be able to go down here and here and here. But the reality is that there's just stuff piled up everywhere that makes that keeps it from uh, allowing you to really explore anything, which is okay. But I think that what's there is, um, a little, a little simplistic at times. And it's sort of like the magic trick has worn off a little bit after Resident Evil two, which felt so much more impactful, um, that said, I think this is this. There's still like a lot of really cool stuff here, and I think it's like I'm really glad that they made this game. I just wish they had gone a little bit further with it. The game is about six hours long total. Um, most people are finishing it even quicker than that. Uh, there's reasons to replay it, but I don't really know if the average player is going to see a uh, sixty dollar value out of something that you know they can beat in six hours. Um, whereas you, you're you know you can buy an open world game for you know, the same price and, and see a lot more. Um, but yeah, it's more big, badass, gorgeous resident evil, you know? Um, uh, and so I'm, I'm glad it's there. Uh, it, like it's, it's a, it's a tough one to talk about, you know, we gave it a nine. Lucy really liked it. Um, some other sites went a little lower to like sixes and sevens and stuff like that. But the majority of people think this is a really good game. And I, I agree with them. I just wish that it was like a little bit more to it. It's got that uh, it's got that big multiplayer component on it too, which I feel like yeah. kind of I don't know what the verdict on that's going to be. Um, I I dabbled with it a little bit and didn't really click, but um, yeah, I feel like you know that that does add some add some value. It is a short game, like there's definitely like when you kind of factor in like the sort of you know cost per hour thing, which I I hate to do, but it is a reality. Like if you're going to spend sixty bucks on a game, especially right now, you want something that's going to last you a little longer. Um, yeah, there's a whole there's a whole sort of arcade system to do like replays um and it doesn't have like a straight new game plus but basically as you progress through the game you they're like different like random objectives that give you different points um and they're kind of they're kind of great it feels almost like a little meta like meta trophy list where it's like yeah. little little checklists and stuff um and then as you do that you get points which you can go into a store at the top of the game and basically like you know buy late game items before starting a second round which can kind of you know if you want to play it on the harder difficulties 
Uh, yeah, there's also items yeah. that you can basically only unlock through those playthroughs, which is really cool. And like, I mean, it's hypocritical, hypocritical of me to complain about the length of this game because I beat Resident Evil Remake on GameCube. I got my my runtime in that game down to I think like two and a half or three hours to unlock the infinite rocket launcher. Like, that was you know that was my that was my game. Like, I got I I my I think my first playthrough of that game probably took ten or eleven twelve hours, and I I could get it down to three hours. So like, if you're like a hardcore Resident Evil guy and you love doing speed runs and you love doing knife only runs, like then this is going to be an awesome playground for you. You're going to absolutely love it. But I think if you're there just like. A- there's a trophy for a speed run like the i think the only gold trophy in the game i looked of course and i think it's for a speed run trophy so. yeah yeah i think there's They're like a encouraging that stuff absolutely and i think that's great and i can't wait to watch some of those playthroughs as like that's going to be you know they're going to do summer games done quick this summer assuming that's a thing that can work over the internet like everything else is assuming yeah. right now but uh i'm really excited to see how people plow through that like that i think one of my other issues with the game is a sort of like the sort of balance and unbalance of the uncanny valley of it all there's this like it's it's pushed into this hyper realism but it's still that big like campy resident evil thing a lot of the video is still pretty campy which i love um and a lot like the nemesis stuff is like it borders on like very slapstick almost hokey at times there's a lot of posters in the game for like like i walked up to a there's a a concession or not a concession stand just like one of those newspaper stands like you would see in new york city um the city itself is sort of like this kit bash of new york there's a there's a like a some seattle in there too uh and there's a uh there's this stand where you walk up and there's just like fake magazines and one of them's called like important <laughs> and like i love it there's like all these fake candy bars and stuff like that there's movie posters for uh there's this there's a toy store in the game called like uncle's fun house or something and it's like come get what you want or something and it's like it's so campy and so hokey i, I love that like all the movie yeah. poster stuff everywhere with and it's like it like only horror exists yeah, yeah. it kind of reminds like a me dr of, wiley um, poster yeah there's dr wiley there's a uh, mega man exists in this universe yeah uh which but it's They're, it's like the it's like the crappy live action old box art version of mega yeah, man the box art one yeah 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 and so like that i think that like that occasionally gets a little bit at odds with the sort of like the the gruesome reality of the whole thing um especially for a game that starts with like live action footage of a like a viral pandemic um i'm not like offended by it or anything it doesn't piss me off it's just like it doesn't 100 percent gel stylistically the was... yeah the dissonance is sort of a thing um like there's a fake movie poster in the game for like like there's like a series of like basically mock terminator and alien movies which i really dig and like nemesis like the terminator the tor- like the metal clanging terminator sound of dun 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 like nemesis in this game has like it's like dun 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 dun, dun. like it's like one <laughs> one beat away it's like totally on the nose as, as being a terminator reference it which honestly, it, I, it, I totally it, appreciate it really reminded me a lot of like especially after coming from from re2 which i feel like is definitely much more somber much more grounded and this one starts getting a little more it gets silly like it gets tongue in cheek yeah. it gets kind of like and especially with the remake where like um mm-hmm. There's some like, there's some very very cute little just sort of self aware like nods, which I just I like laughed out loud at this game. It was it's surprisingly funny, um, but like the Terminator thing really kind of clicked for me, where it's like it goes from you know if you look at sort of how Mr X followed you around in RE2, it it kind of felt like this sort of he's clunky and he comes along and he punches you in the face and he felt kind of kind of stupid like the uh you know like the original Terminator the original Schwarzenegger one when he's just like. He doesn't really say anything. He says, I'll be back. And he's like kind of this, it, it, he's like menacing, but in sort of like a, like a kind of stupid way. Uh, and then you look at like T2 and you've got the T1000, which is this like, you know, transforming, like killing machine. Who's just like smart and like lethal. And it's just like this, you know, it's, you got Robert Patrick just being like, just, he's just on top of it. And I feel like nemesis is much more like that where he's like, the first time you run into Nemesis, there's this kind of impulse to behave like you would with Mr. X, and he yeah. immediately shuts that down. And it's like, yeah, like I definitely had to like a like a panic where like ah, just get and like totally yeah. he was not prepared. You can't like shoot his little hat off and make fun of him. Like yeah, he, he like he's definitely like, scarier. He, like he'll just like scream, which is like horrible. <laughs> But he's still, really, he's still there to punch you in the face. Like he's still like he'll get a hold of you and he'll like, you know, he has all these other other stuff he does where he'll just like he'll like jump and he'll like, you know, like shoot you with a rocket launcher, which is like kind of cartoony. Like he's kind yeah. of this wily coyote. Um 
but then he again, really the day, really hates you yeah like, he's so pissed yeah. and he's just like but then he, he still does that thing where he just comes up and just like punches you in the face which is like it's i don't know it's so uh, at, at odds with his like entire awesome character design no it is it is like it's like jackass levels of comical how many walls he busts through and stuff like yeah. that like it's it's almost like it's like borderline prank show like <laughs> Like, you'll just be like, wow, that was bad. I'm glad I got away from that. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh, and he just burst through a wall. Well, and at, like, one point, he jumps, like, without spoiling the story or anything, but at one point, he jumps out of, like, a fifth story of a building with a giant, like, when he's first getting the rocket launcher, he has it in its box with him. Like, he's not just carrying the rocket launcher. He has its case, too, and yeah. he's holding that in one arm. Um, I love yeah, it. Yeah, for me, as someone who bounced off of RE2 because of the anxiety that uh, Mr. X induced, um, like, I I couldn't keep playing that game because I essentially trapped myself in a room with no ammo and just was unable to figure out a way out without him killing me. And I just kind of was like, well, I'm done for now. And then I never went back to it. And I totally like <laughs> appreciate it in a lot of ways, but I like that the nemesis encounters here are at least more contained. Right. Uh, right. Cause I like being able to, ex I, I think the uh, police station is a better setting totally than the city, but I do think the freedom that I know I have to explore these locations more uh, gelled with me at least better because it was, um, even if I knew there were zombies still left in a location, I'm like, okay, I can maybe come back and have some ammo to deal with them. And there won't also be a man jumping through in these like early portions of the game. So that for me, at least like getting acclimated to it because I bounced from RE2 was a lot more player friendly i guess for me yeah that's a really good way of putting it i think that the the franchise in general is i think it lives and dies on its ability to balance its core themes and gameplay elements and if you look at something like six that tipped the scales too far into sort of like big dumb action movie and i think three has enough of that in it but still enough survival horror that the balance still kind of works um I miss the sort of tightness of one, two, and I think the first three fourths of seven, um, and the sort of player freedom and openness of four and five to a, a lesser extent. Um, and so I think it's like it's constantly finding that way to go. That said, I think that like the recipe is down now, and like maybe sometimes there's a little bit too much sugar or a little too much salt, but I think that like ultimately like it, I like I like I like what they're cooking. You know, that was a very the, dumb way of putting it, but yes. The the structure of the city is is an interesting point because like when the original came out, like that was the best you were gonna get structurally for a video game city. Like we didn't, you know, there was no such thing as like a sandbox city game to explore. Like we're so sort of used to that being a thing you can do, but like, you know, when that game came out, like GTA three was still a few years off. And it's yeah, like yeah. it's I, it's kind of weird that we you know, when you look at like a, an environment, like the police station, you think of it as being like, here is a sort of like, here's a level, you know, here's a, here's an enclosed, you know, compartment. Whereas like the, the idea of a, a city being structured the same way, just, you know, there's that whole thing of like, oh, you see that mountain, you can go up there. And it's like, you see that other side of the street? Well, you can't go there because there's cars in the way. It's like, well, why, yeah. why not? But if it was a wall, we wouldn't think too hard about it. You know, I think we're, this is, um, uh, on top of this coming out during a global pandemic, which is, you know, obviously just bad circumstance, uh, coming out so close to Final Fantasy VII is an, another interesting sort of conversation. And I think that those two will be forever intertwined in conversation on, um, you know, different ways to handle a remake. And if you look at the way FF7 is sort of like expanding a lot of elements and scaling them up, um, that's not really something that Resident Evil 3 is attempting to to that extent but that said as someone who played the original and enjoyed it for the most part uh there are parts in this game that recreate scenes from the original in such like a vivid and insane and cool way that it's hard to be upset at it uh for being so limited and sort of like you know not scaling so much bigger because there's like little details happening that happened in the first hour of the original game that happen here now that are just so much more like just through the roof and and vicious and insane and just fun that you're kind of like okay that's a like you took this thing that i remember and you ramped it up like crazy but you still sort of kept it in the scale that maybe you deemed appropriate for this so yeah i mean i, I don't know like there's a version of this game that uh doesn't necessarily go more open world but um had had gotten a little wider but that's not the really the one we got i was so my theory with this is that's that's a technical limitation of the current hardware and that 
Capcom is basically like biding their time before they can do something that is really like fully like here is the future of Resident Evil. Here's the big blow the doors wide open kind of thing. Like whatever it is they decide to do with eight, presumably that'll follow kind of the, you know, the examples of of what what you know seven did. Like it'll be kind of more you know close claustrophobic first person stuff. But I I could totally see them being like okay here's like a much more reimagined four. Like here's four, but it's like practically open world you know like the kind of thing where they really like and they take advantage of the hardware like they've got all these assets they basically you know they have all these bits and pieces of raccoon city that they've already created and this engine is like clearly made to kind of bridge the gap between hardware generations because it's like it is stunning to look at and my ps4 pro sounded like a jet engine the entire time i was playing yeah mine too Uh, yeah mine too (laughs) like it's pushing it really hard it's it reminds me a lot of what square enix was doing with the um uh rise of the tomb raider um, or yeah. not, not Rise of the Tomb Raider, yeah. the, the one before that, which was technically a last gen game, like when the, when the Tomb oh, Raider yeah. reboot came out. And it was, right. I remember they were putting out like, well, here's what our hair looks like in the PC version. And it was like, oh, so that's what we're getting. And then sure enough, they put up like a, you know, an up-res next gen port. And we all kind of retconned it to be like, oh, that's, that was a current gen game. And I could completely see like Capcom coming out with like, hey, here's the, you know, here's the, um, you know, Series X PS5 version of, you know, RE2 and 3 paired with resistance. And it's like a big old bundle and it has like, you know, more bells and whistles and faster load time, but also coming out with a brand new, uh, I don't know if it it would be a remake of 4 or Code Veronica or something entirely new, but that uses these systems they've been developing, um, but really takes advantage of the hardware. I I just feel like they've been kind of laying groundwork for something really impressive like that. Yeah, Yeah, no, that's that's a really good point. Sorry. No, I'm just totally agreeing with you guys. Yeah, I feel like this is um, two and three are obviously like of a piece, both in the past in the way they complemented each other and now, which is really interesting that like history is sort of repeating itself that way. Um, But seeing for me, I like I think absolutely my PS4 Pro, I can't handle this game barely, but it is gorgeous. Um, And so I would love to see what it would be like on next gen with even more of a sheen and more of a polish um especially there's a little bit of an intro section that i don't want to spoil i guess but the way it frames the very very beginning of the game looked insanely beautiful to me maybe my eyes were just deceiving me but i thought it was like insane how pretty it looked um and yeah i'm excited to see what they keep doing building off this foundation so yeah Yeah. uh, like in regards to sort of the future of remakes and stuff i feel like if they are going to take a page from what what Square Enix did with with FF7 as a remake. Like if you're going to dump resources into fully remaking a Resident Evil game from the ground up, are you going to are you going to go with a sure thing with like remaking 4, the thing that everyone like knows and loves and adores and like really like you know really kick that up to 11 or are you going to do one that's always been sort of a black sheep like like Nemesis, you know? Oh, you mean Code Code Veronica? I mean Nemesis or Code Veronica. Like either both yeah. of those are like, you know, they're people like them but like four is the one that everyone's like, this is it. Like everyone kind of loses their, loses their mind over that. Yeah. Weirdly. Um, like I played both those, I, I played code Veronica and for the, the, the days they launched and both of those games shared an interesting trait in that they felt almost like a half generation ahead from the current ger- generation that they launched on. Like they were wildly ambitious. I think, you know, code Veronica gets a bad rap because it's like a little wobbly and a little uneven. Um, and it's got some like truly ridiculously hokey nonsense in it, which I kind of love. Uh, and so I would actually really like to see like a modernized take on that game just to give it a refresh. Um, two and three felt like known quantities that they, that they kind of ramped up a little bit code Veronica. I think they have a little bit more wiggle room to get, to get a little bit more free with and four, I mean, four is a tough one because it's like, to me, that's like a pretty perfect game already. Um, and you would have to fundamentally strip away that, um, you know, stop, stop and shoot mechanic and make the game a full on third person action game where you're running and gunning. And, uh, you know, that's gonna, I think that's going to irk some purists, but, uh, on the same page, like the original games on every console ever made. So you can just go play it there if you want. I say, yeah. I say, bring them on, you know, for you run the risk of, you know, hurting the sacred cow that everyone worships rightly. So like, I, I understand why the game is so beloved, but I, I can see why they would want to remake that, but also why you'd be hesitant to do too much, because if you change too much, then people are going to be like, why did you ruin this game? I loved as if it, you know, somehow retroactively destroys the original, even though it doesn't, but um, y- you do run into 
that. Whereas I think if you started remaking Code Veronica, you'd probably could only do right by it. Um, mm-hmm. But obviously it doesn't have the name cache. I'd personally love to see them do a Resident Evil remake remake of the first game. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> um, obviously, like that, uh, that remake was the first Resident Evil I ever played. And I think it's great. But especially with two and three, I wish they would give the same love to that original. Because right now we only do have the remake which doesn't quite stand up to these remakes um, in terms I mean, of like visual polish. Playing playing through that mansion in like an actual, you know, third person where you controlled player movement and not just like locked camera angles uh, would would be awesome. Like I would totally love that. And again, that's like not one of those things where I'd be like, how dare you? Because like I played every iteration of that game. I played, you know, the original, the remake, the director's cut, the DS version that added like, you know, touch screen knifing, like there's that's that game that game's imported to everything. And so like, sure, why not? Like it would be an interesting decision for them to go backwards uh and then go forwards. If they went to one and then four and then just forgot Code Veronica existed, that'd be really funny. <laughs> um but yeah, I, I mean here's hoping they get to all of them. They like I don't know what the development looked like for three. I think that it was being developed concurrently with two, but the fact that we got both these games within a year from each other is is staggering you know like that kind of kicks ass Mm -hmm. it's i like it it definitely has its problems but more than anything else it just got me really excited like i just had a really good time with it and it got it made me just want to go and like replay all the stuff that i haven't and just like i don't know it's like i'm kind of a a, you know rookie resident evil fan and like i played four last year and was like you know it's like when somebody's been recommending a movie to you and you're like i know it's a classic and then you sit down and actually watch it and you're like oh wow that's why people really care about it you know like RE4 is so much fun. And it's yeah, I, I, like, I just want, I want more like that, you know? Playing this has made me go like, I should go back and give RE2 another chance, especially knowing how much everyone loved it. I should maybe finally get to RE4, um, especially after Max's reaction to playing it for the first time and everything. But yeah, I, I definitely agree there. It's not perfect. And I can especially see why some people are preferring RE2 over RE3, which is contrary to how I'm feeling. But I I'm really enjoying my time with it, and I do hope that we just get to see them continue to push the envelope with the series. Like, it feels like the franchise is in a really good place, and I yeah. can't wait to see where they bring it in the next generation. Yeah, which is great because like there were there were many many years where the franchise was a very bad place, and so this is a really great renaissance. Even if, um, you know, even if if they're still sort of iterative right now, and they're they're remake, it's it's mostly remake stuff. Um, they're, I think that they're building towards something that's going to be even better and better. Like once they get all the remakes out of the way, uh, and even while they get the remakes out of the way, I think they can build a brand new Resident Evil game that just kicks ass, uh, learning from everything that they've learned making making these things. Yeah, I think there's also, it's got to, I, I can't speak to what's going on inside Capcom, but like I imagine that they've got people working there who, you know, grew up with the series and have this like, like it's old enough that it's got this kind of legacy to it where you've got probably young and excited hungry devs who have like a you know a modern sensibility when it comes to making games but also like you know respect for the originals so it's like kind of cool to see how that's actually being handled and how i mean like i want to see what happens next with the series i think it's just a, it's it is in a really good spot and like you were saying there was a there was like even as somebody who wasn't really involved with it it was it was you know disheartening to watch sort of the fall from grace that happened with uh you know f- five and, and six gradually mm-hmm yeah, between the favor that seven did, which presumably will they'll follow up with with eight, and how the remakes are doing, a pretty good time for the Resident Evil franchise. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see if it can maintain that, especially as we go into the next generation. Um, I, if you haven't already, as a train is going by my window, so sorry if you hear some honking. Um, it's the hype train. <laughs> it's the hype train for Resident Evil Three, and you can check out Lucy's review. Uh, if you haven't, go check out her single player review. She's working on the multiplayer review, and will be publishing a full, all encompassing review after that fact. So go check it out. Uh, Kalila, one of our video editors, did an amazing video edit for the single player campaign review. Definitely worth watching as well as reading Lucy's review. Uh, but that's live on IGN right now. I uh, did want to transfer to. Not sure if you guys got a chance to play it, but did either of you jump into the Predator Hunting Grounds? trial over the weekend i unfortunately did not all good uh, i'll keep it short then because i'll be writing a preview for ign but uh this comes out at the end of april in full and there was a trial weekend which started a little rocky uh it took me upwards of four to five minutes to get into matches on day one Oof, which was yeah. not great 
Um, I, and- I anecdotally noticed a lot of people dealing with that same sort of issue. Um, some people were waiting much longer than that. Yeah, even the the devs were uh, facing that issue as they were playing from home and then going to work and fix on it. I was following some of their Twitter accounts. but uh, And there were even a couple of times where it would slot me in as the Predator and it would never load me with human opponents. So I just couldn't play into a match and would just have to back out myself. Um, but could so, you just run around uh, being the Predator? No, it didn't even let me just pop into the oh. map. Yeah. The, are, you even a, are you even a Predator if you have nobody to pred it? <laughs> That's yeah. That's why I hate talking if a, about. If a predator is in a tree in the forest and he's invisible, is he? Does he make a sound? Is he really there? <laughs> I think he I'm still sorry. makes that sound. <laughs> <laughs> he always makes um, that sound. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the first match I did uh, on day one was I was the only human facing off against the predator, which was like the scariest game experience I'd had in a while. <laughs> yeah, so that's Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. my man. That's what Schwarzenegger yeah. did. He he, he made it. Did you cover yourself with mud and hide in the ground? <laughs> I did, and then a human spotted me, which alerted the predator. That sucks. I yeah. So we um, we played this game at uh at uh New York Comic Con many years ago. And Pax? New York Comic. Yeah, yeah. We played it like last year, and it. I'm like I'm pretty excited about. it. I was actually really bummed I missed the the preview weekend, but like. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. I, just, I, I didn't want to seem like I was being negative about it. I'm actually... No, it's all good. I, I think you'll enjoy it because uh, basically what I say in my previews, I think it's really good at being a Predator game. And um, when it's the human squad dealing with the Predator, the Predator trying to take out the human squad of players, that part of it is really fun. It's the stuff that you're doing otherwise when you're a human that's less fun. And I think could be worked on a little bit more and granted they can iterate on this stuff but usually you drop into a mission and as a human you're one of four people in a squad and you have other goals beyond killing the predator normally it drills down to like kill these bad guys find the drugs that these bad guys have kill them and their drugs like it's pretty same as you go through. kill the drugs kill the drugs drugs are bad i mean it's a pretty good dare game dare would be really happy game but um, i'm actually really surprised that the predator hates drugs he's like a reggae lizard do you think he'd be really into it (laughs) not the predator it's the humans i think the predator's cool with them um that's what i thought does it well i mean he kills a lot of rasta drug dealers in predator too he does i didn't didn't spot any of them in this game yet but so essentially you're going through and it's like go from point a to point b grab this intel or start up a log on a computer and defend the point as human ai come and spawn against you and the human ai is pretty like simple it'll stand there in place shoot at you or run behind a corner and wait for you to come chase it the human ai i think could be a little bit more complex or at least add some dynamism to it but it is nice to have that other goal because the game i think does a really good job of distracting you from the terror that's in your head that the predator is somewhere out there because it's the human you just have no idea where the predator can be when you start i think it, uh, it also has a really good way of like playing on what the original movie did where you've got this like troop of ultimate badasses that come in and they're like they're like wrecking shop and they're like killing all the npc bad guys and blowing up the drugs and it's like you know they're like really tough and then the predator shows up and suddenly it's like oh no you're not tough um but i i love the idea like i feel like there are all these all these asymmetrical multiplayer games have whenever you're not playing as the cool monster or the thing that has the powers your objectives are kind of like they never really focus on that enough and this time around i think it was it it's fairly generic like first person shooter stuff but the idea that you can still like you can still kick ass at your primary objective and you can you know, hack the drugs or headshot the Coke Lord or whatever it is that you're supposed to do. But then like the predator hack shows the up Coke. and it, like it like ruined yeah, it hack it hack into the weed or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> predator shows up and just like starts ruining your your plans. Like there's something really like amusing about that to me. Yeah, no, it's awesome. the combination of the two that works really well. Like if it was just a game where you were doing these missions, it would be a pretty boring game. Um but when they get interrupted and when you're in the middle of like, taking out, you know, twenty AI combatants and then the predator just comes in with either a ground slam or he shoots something from his laser cannon or you do get upgrades so there are other items that you get throughout it but the predator can just come in and wreak havoc but if you as a team work together really well like it never felt impossible to defeat the predator it felt tough but it always felt pretty achievable but and so it felt like a pretty good balance between the two because obviously you want to be playing as the predator like he's obviously cooler he has a better arsenal everything about him is better but when you work together as a team it's it's a really fun like squad game because if you go out on your own i found if there was ever a mission where i 
snuck away from the group or took an alternate path or just wasn't quite in sync with the strangers or friends I was playing with, we were done. Like it just yeah. you can't. Um, and I, th- I think it's really cool that it does reward playing together and being smart and playing tactically. And, and I think that part of it is really great and really fun. I hope this, I hope this does well. Cause I'd really love to see them do some kind of like weird experimental stuff with it. Like there's something really funny to me about the idea of, of jumping into like a deathmatch game or just like a team, just like a standard multiplayer thing or like capture the flag or whatever. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to play this and maybe the predator shows up, but like, you don't know for sure. Like the idea that like, if they, if you, I mean, if you effectively, they kind of did this with, um, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands, I think. Like they just threw mm-hmm. in the Predator, but for there to be like, yeah, you're a bunch of like tactical badass guys, but maybe maybe the Predator's there too. Who knows? Like, is he going to show up and like kill you? <laughs> yeah, because I, I like mean, the idea of him going on like a tour and surprise attacking a bunch of online multiplayer games. <laughs> that's the best, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what the Terminator was doing last year. He was in like six games last mm-hmm. year. It felt like. Yeah, but they always um, announced it. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, saying it should be I, a surprise. So, <laughs> just he shows up in Modern Warfare. He just appears. Yeah. Mario Kart. <laughs> I think we're just describing Over hackers. Cut. I think we're just like people who do like aimbots and stuff and like yeah. <laughs> cheat at the game. Yeah, we're just making mods. Um, but yeah, I I enjoyed a lot of it. I do think like it's one of those games that'll obviously live or die by how many people are playing it. And I do hope people come in because it's obviously the team at Elphonic, um, who worked previously on Friday the 13th, like they have a sense for how to do these asymmetrical multiplayer games. And I think once they especially have it in the wild, they'll be able to continue to iterate on it and improve it. But like the base of the Predator stuff is really fun. So I'm excited to see how people take that going forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and then moving on from that one, a game that is out that I do want to talk about briefly, I uh, don't think either of you guys have had time with it, is Persona 5 Royal, um, since Andrew Goldfarb is not here to discuss. Um, Andrew, of course, did our original Persona 5 review uh, review in 2017, 18, I don't remember, uh, 2017, I think that game came out. And so Persona 5 Royal is essentially a deluxe edition of the game that uh, the game takes place like over a calendar year. Uh, you're a kid who's in a uh, private academy and they've added a full new semester to the game. So there's like a huge chunk of new content in there. Um, a new party member, uh, couple new characters you can have like friendship links with but then there's also new integrations and new content all throughout the game so like playing it through as someone who's already played it there's brand new areas in each of the main dungeons dungeons the palaces which um they've added like a grappling hook so you can get to areas that were never like accessible before uh they rebalanced all the boss fights so those are all totally different to be able to play Hmm. um they've added all these little like touches and improvements and new pieces of content that are also you know fully featured things in themselves that it is it like as someone who's already put 110 hours into this game the, in the original version i intend to put another 100 hours in easy um <laughs> it like it was one of those things where i started playing and i'm like i'll check it out for the first like 10 hours or so and probably bounce from that but i started playing and i'm like oh god i need to see this through to the end i need to play oh all man this like it it just has its hooks in me again which is such a great feeling um because it's such a stylish, fun game. Like there's just so much that's it has this energy to it that never relinquishes. And so all even though it is a hundred hours, it is very, very hundred hours. Um and I think we are we're we're giving it a pretty good score. I think the review is gonna be up because I saw it. Uh Red, our producer, I'll tell you if you need to cut this, but we're giving it a 10. So Oh. Yeah, Damn. Uh, the second 10 of the year after uh, Stapleton's Half-Life Alex 10. So, Second 10 of the month. month. Yeah, yeah, right before it wraps up. Not, not a bad way to start the year. Yeah, um, not, a, but have you guys... not a bad way to end this endless, horrible month. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you guys been playing anything else recently or jumping into anything? Because it's, it's obviously a you know, bit of a weird time. We're all at home, but... Um, no, I meant to start, uh, Moons of Madness and, um, I didn't get a chance to, cause I just, I was mostly playing Resident Evil 3, almost at four, I wish. <laughs> and, um, Animal Crossing, which has just sucked away all my time because it's a wonderful escapism right now. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. I've been, you know, just playing Animal Crossing. I've been trying to like keep busy around the house and like in real life and in Animal Crossing, you know? So it's like, I don't know. I, that. I, I, I could, I could definitely see myself jumping back into Persona Five, though. I don't know. Did you I ever didn't. Kind of, 
No, I got like 10 hours in. I think I got past the first the first dungeon or like close to it or something, but I I, I liked it. I didn't I definitely didn't dislike it. The music is phenomenal. It's gorgeous to look at. Uh, I really I enjoyed everything about the game. I think just except for the amount of like, you know, inherent grinding you have to do. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the anxiety with like how you use your time. Like there's that that whole thing where you know, in the game, you're like, oh, your time is fleeting. You can only do so many things. And there's like, but what about the buyer's remorse? And then there's the meta, the meta game of that, which is, should I spend 110 hours playing a video game that reminds me that my time is precious? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, t- I totally get that. And that was a, a hard. He would just like, give me tips on basically the best way to use your time. And there are like ideal paths to do, but he also was like, just experiment and do stuff like, except that you'll probably waste some time like you would in real life and you'll probably end up enjoying it. Um, is is this the version of the game people should jump into if they skip the base version? Yeah, if you haven't played beyond like it's been on sale for the past 3 months and they were holding off cuz this was coming out. I think there's no reason to go back and play Persona 5 and then come play Royal. Like just jump into Royal. You'll still get the experience that made so many people love 5, but you'll just get a lot more on top of it that obviously a lot of people who have been playing it are loving too. I so. just want this on Switch though. I know. Like cuz I want to be like if I have to if the thing is going to take 110 hours, like I I guess that's not really an issue now. It's not like I can leave the house to go to sit at the DMV or ride the bus or whatever. Like so it's sort of a non-issue. I might as well just play F word thing on the F word PS4. Is that what? what uh, is that? Is that the first thing you're gonna do when you DMV? <laughs> yeah, I just God, I it, can't man. wait to go to that DMV. DMV. I don't know. No, like I don't know. There's that. There's that mentality I have, and I've I've talked about this with like with like there's specific types of games where I'm like I want to play that game when I'm bored. Like I want to yeah. play that when I'm in a place that's tedious. Otherwise, like I want to play that while commuting. I want to play that on an airplane. And then it's like it. It's like but like it's fun on its own. I could play it for fun on my own time, but I don't know. It's just a it's a stupid metal thing. And especially with RPGs, my recommendation, because I ended up the first time, if you go back to it, Max, it's actually pretty episodic. So like you can put it down for a bit and then come back to it and not completely feel like you've lost your place because essentially it's one overarching story, but every palace or dungeon like has its own story and framework within it. So you can, and there are logs of every chat you've had and like, you can go back and check things. Um, so it's a game that like you can put down. I was basically doing a palace a month and I would play a palace and then put it down for a week or two and then come back to it. So it is a game that you can actually kind of play almost. Every- That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Which for a hundred plus hour game is nice to have those breaks. No, totally. Um, but yeah, before we wrap it up, it hasn't really been. I should mention happened on this day um we could touch on it briefly because i've definitely seen some discussion of it uh call of duty modern warfare 2 remastered campaign is available today on playstation 4 uh, the day before you're probably listening or watching this um it is a 30 day timed exclusive on ps4 before it comes to pc and xbox one um i've seen a lot of people complain that why are they doing this at this time my guess is that deal was probably in place months ago because obviously they've had the dlc and everything first but at the same time timed exclusives suck yeah i had i had a deal uh, in place to get on a plane and go to new orleans and get drunk with my wife but that got put on ice so like maybe release the game for everybody like maybe if activision wants people to be happy about a thing they could just just push it out yeah yeah (laughs) yeah it's it's a a weird situation obviously the last generation it's just something i've been thinking about Last gen, everything was exclusive to 360. Like Call of Duty timed exclusives were there. But I think like the player base as a whole has come around to the idea. Timed exclusives don't really benefit anyone pockets of those companies. Yeah. Um, and especially yeah. as crossplay becomes more prevalent. Like, yes, of course, we want to see PlayStation do well. We love PlayStation exclusives here. We want those games to be able to keep being made. I think when it's preventative for a third party game to be played by everyone and for that player base to enjoy that game wide like that. that's where we start to run into issues with that. Yeah, I don't think no no video game has ever been made more fun by its ability to rob a large group of people from enjoying. You know? Like I've never been able to, I've never been like this is a better game because I have this and you can't. Um 
and I, I, I think you totally nailed it. The only really the, like the, the people that benefit from this are, you know, Bobby Kotick. Yeah. That sucks. He doesn't even play know. video games. He's a, he's a fake gamer. Yeah. He got his money ball cameo. He should be happy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's a bummer. The timing's definitely bad too, to sort of just like announce like right now, what, co- what every company should be doing is like, how can we be as good to as many people as possible within the constraints that we're all put in, you know, like, I don't, I don't necessarily think that every video game company on earth should, you know, dump out free games for everyone right now. Cause they're probably also looking at their bottom line with some concern. Everybody's tightening the belt a lot these days. Uh, that said, I think it's, 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 it's crappy to put out something that so many people can enjoy. This is not like a, a new thing. That's the thing. That's a story here. This is a, this is a remaster of a classic air quotes for people who think it's a classic game. Um, I, there is a lot dumber games that I think are classic games before you get mad at me. Um, that people, that was a multi-platform game that people could enjoy pretty much everywhere. And now that's only being funneled on the one console. And I think that's a, that's a, that's a bummer. And it's, it's, uh, it's short-sighted. And like you guys said, like, this is obviously, this was in place a while ago, but pivot, you know, the <laughs> rules are changing now. <laughs> like yeah. things are different now. It's, yeah. It's, it, we are it seeing feels companies to, it does. Yeah. And, yeah. and to your point earlier, uh, yeah, obviously every company has to consider their bottom line, but we do see a company like uh, you today, they're doing a month of free games via Uplay. So obviously yep. you need to subscribe to their ser- or be logged into their service. You don't have to buy the subscription service, but uh, you do need a Uplay account. But today they're offering Rayman Legends for free, which is great and offering like, a few smaller games that they've put out for free and then a bunch of game trials. And then throughout the month, they're going to be adding more free games that are just going to be available for people to play this month to help yep. encourage people to stay home, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, that's um, a really smart way to do it. I mean, I think that like that's the, the that level of communication helps so much right now. Uh, and it goes across the board for everybody. I'm not just, you know, focusing or singling out uh, Activision on this one, but like, I got a, I got an email from like, it, it was like, hotels.com and they're like congrats on your gold tier membership you have two weeks to use your reward and i'm like where do you want me to go dude like maybe don't send this email like maybe shut off the robot that sent this email like i I think it's just like people should just have like a little bit more concern about this kind of stuff right now and have a have a couple of conversations internally and be like is this the right move right this second to alienate two-thirds of our demographic who play this game on on pc and xbox and 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 just tell them to wait a month and like i'm saying this on a playstation podcast it would be easier for me to just be like yeah this rules we win again but like i i'm trying to think about the the bigger picture right now you know yeah i think everybody should be able to shoot anyone they want in call of duty (laughs) modern warfare (laughs) everyone should be able to experience no russian again which i remember yeah leader and ign seeing about a thousand (laughs) articles and videos and i can't wait to again um before we wrap up because i'm unfortunately a little bit pressed for time but we have more shows uh coming i'll talk to you everyone about in a second uh, did want to read a memory card story, which of course memory card is our weekly segment where you, the viewers and listeners at home, tell us your funny, weird, wacky, sad, whatever memory card stories, uh, your memories of your gaming life. We read them on the show. You can write yours in at beyond at IGN.com, uh, email beyond at IGN.com with the subject line memory card and we'll every week on the show. This one comes from Casey and I don't think I've read this. If I have, stop me. Time is a flat surf. But anyway, Casey says... Beyond, I would like to say congrats to Brian on getting that Bloodborne Platinum. Of course, we have to mention Bloodborne. Anyway, speaking oh, yeah. of Bloodborne, <laughs> I, have, I have a short, awkward memory card. Last year, I was going through kind of a funk. I had a crush who had a tattoo, which I asked about. She explained it was the Hunter's Mark from Bloodborne and recommended the game. So, thinking I could make conversation with my crush Bloodborne if I knew more about it, I went home, downloaded it, and started playing. I got hooked after finally beating Gascoigne on my 20th try, Losing sight of the reason I started, I ended up getting the platinum and all the DLC trophies after weeks of getting my butt kicked. Yes. The the next time I saw her, I said to her, "Hey, thank. You. I loved it. I platinumed it without skipping a beat." She said, "Yeah, it's a pretty easy platinum." I almost cried. Oh <laughs> yeah. man! Happy hunting to Jonathan. May you find your best, Casey. Um, okay you know what i don't know anything about this woman but i'm glad that they that they're not together because she that's not you need that's not what you need in a relationship you need support you know you need need someone that's gonna be there for you and 
not you know not undermine your achievements. Yeah, maybe she right? should get good at being nicer to people. That's yeah. <laughs> get nice. That's yeah. My, that's when, when, hashtag get nice. When I when I platinum Bloodborne, it was like six thirty in the morning, and I'd been up since like four. And I like I think I woke my <laughs> wife up, and I was like, "Come in the living room and take a picture of me in front of the TV." She's like wearing her nurse scrubs and going to work. And she's like, "Yeah, okay, whatever, honey, got it." And she's like, "You look very happy," and I was like, "Yeah, thank you." Um, so I don't I don't know get get that if you can find it in the world, you know, get somebody that will. Uh, that's a hard ass platinum. I'm sorry, those chalice dungeons are a pain in the ass. That woman's that should be, I don't know if she's the one of the best video gamers on earth or whatever, but <laughs> that was hard. That took a, that took years for me. So yeah, hang in there. Well, congrats on your achievement either way or yeah, trophy. Casey, congratulations <laughs> on your trophy. Come on, Brian. We don't talk. Um, <laughs> and uh, before we wrap up, just wanted to briefly check in, plug the stuff we're working on. Obviously, you guys last week brought back up at noon at five. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. It, now it's noon Fijian time, which is 5 p.m. Pacific on mm-hmm. Fridays, so we can drink. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was Brian. It was Brian's birthday and Bloodborne's birthday last week, so I surprised Brian at the end of the show with the Bloodborne cake that I made myself, which was horrible. And uh, <laughs> Bloodborne yeah, birthday. I, I, yeah, I hope we. I hope we. We just we're going to do that again this week. I guess no one's told us we can't. So I don't think we should. I don't think we should make a cake this. I was going to celebrate whatever. I was going to make a no Russian cake in honor of Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> oh, so let's, let's make that cake in November. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Hopefully. And, uh, Max, you also wrote a, uh, an entry for our Binge It series, correct? Yeah. Uh, Scott Calora from the entertainment team has been doing this cool thing where it's just like a daily feature of somebody just recommending something they love, which is really what you know IGN feature should be it's like people i mean we're all passionate about different types of pop culture and media and it's nice to have something that's just that but a series of books that i've really adored is uh china mieville's uh bass lag trilogy it's this incredibly weird uh sort of sci-fi sort of steampunk sort of fantasy books that they, they have audiobooks out there um they actually uh I th- i'm pretty sure the FromSoft guys have read them because there's there's like some critters that have shown up in bloodborne that are like a hundred percent from these books. Uh, so it's, it's, it's cool. If that there's your, there's your point of entry, if you're a gamer, but go check that out. Great books. I had fun <laughs> writing about them. So there's that. You said there's audio books. Yeah. They're real. Maybe they're like, those up. I think you'd hate them actually. I think, <laughs> I think it's, it's definitely like the audio book definitely leans into the sort of red and fair whimsy side of shit that <laughs> I feel like you don't have any patience for. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, thou doth know me too well. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, anything else you're working on you want to play? Uh, uh, uh I'm tr- I I'm I I I'm I've been doing like a, a million voiceovers for all of our Animal Crossing stuff. So if you're stuck in that game, air quotes, and uh you're you're looking to cheat or whatever. Um I'll I'll echo Max and we're really proud that Up at Noon's back. Um they didn't actually say if we could do another one this week, so we're just gonna do it. Um, and until they say not to do it, we'll do it. That's always been the plan for that show. And several times throughout history, they've said, don't do it. And several times after that, we've done it again. So we're going to do it. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching that. Um, yeah, just a bunch of podcasts, all that, all that fun stuff, all our video shows. Um, yeah, the usual. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to another up in- at five. Uh, and, uh, for me, you can check out the predator preview that I'll be, uh, I or is up hopefully who knows how time works uh can't tell the president is invisible sometimes who knows yeah. where he is all of all of my ink you have to highlight it to be able to read <laughs> um you can also uh look forward we're going to be doing a recap deep dive uh looking back at ps4 exclusives we're recording this week so if you have any thoughts or if you revisited infamous and have any say about it what you loved what you didn't what you hoping for uh ghost of tsushima right into beyond at ign.com we'll read a bunch of your thoughts on the show um thank you for playing along those who have at home i've seen a few people tweet me also getting the platinum so congratulations to you on that but uh other than that we'll be back uh next week and this yeah, every week as far as we know we're going to be doing this uh because beyond is live every wednesday at 3 p.m pacific at beyond.ign.com youtube.com slash IGN beyond and your favorite podcast services around the world. 
Uh, on Twitter, I'm at JM Dornbush. Brian is at Agent Bizzle and Max is at Max Coville. You can catch everything else we're doing on IGN.com and YouTube.com slash IGN. And of course, thank you so much for listening and or watching this episode. And as always, beyond. Beyond. Beyond.